Patricia Bras, welcome to Passion Tom, the show where the experts share what they're passionate about. I'm here with Jenny Herbacek. She is the author of Cancer Free, Are You Sure? Well, why is it that many people get diagnosed with cancer, get treated, then years later they get a recurrence? She has some very, very important information about cancer prevention and finding out if you have cancer way before it becomes something that you can detect on the regular tests like mammograms and PET scans and all that. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I want you to tell me um, how you found your passion. With my 2009 cancer diagnosis, um, it changed my life. It was the worst day of my life. It was the worst year of my life. I survived it. Um, and now my passion is to keep other people from experiencing what I went through. Let's talk about, you know, we're going to talk about cancer prevention because mm -hmm. if people want to know about the test, right. they need to read your book. Right. And there is one test that you wanted to tell I me about, do. the Uncle Blot, because that yes. anybody can have that test. Tell me about the Uncle Blot test. I would love to see everyone at 30 and at 35 and at 40 get this test. It's actually in FDA clinical trials now. Um, what this test is, it's a blood test, a simple test. Um, they take a sample of blood and they're looking for something called the ENOX2 protein. That protein is only put out by cancer cells. And you only need about 2 million cells to have enough ENOX2 protein for, for the lab to pick up a positive for cancer. Well, you think 2 million cells, that's a lot of cells. No, that's the size. If you took a, a pen and put a little dot of ink on your, on your skin, that's how big 2 million cells is. Now, the great thing about this test is it will also tell you um, if it's one of the 27 major types of cancer, the site of origin. So you can walk into your doctor's office and say, uh, show them the book, say, I want this test. The doctor can get signed up with the lab. They can order the test for you. And if it comes back negative, it is the best, best money you've ever spent because you don't have to worry that, that you've that got... That you could possibly get cancer Right, in the because in my diagnosis, I was told I'd had cancer at least eight years. And I thought, what have I been doing for eight years? I could have been intervening. And if, if I had had this test at year two, two or three, right. mm -hmm. I could have found it. I tell you, I would have been in a sauna sweating. Right, I would have, right, right, I would right. have been passing on the pedophores sure, at all sure. the parties. I would have, right. I would have completely changed my Change lifestyle. Change your lifestyle. Um, is this Uncle Blot test for people who have never had cancer? It wouldn't be for like you and me. We've both right. had cancer. I would probably test positive on it because so we you and know. I would test positive right. because we already had it. Right, and mm -hmm. usually because of circulating cells that are left behind from the primary tumor, most people. Most people st still have cancer cells after they think they're cancer free. And a lot of times the immune system keeps them in check, but you have a stressful event and it comes back. But right. well, I just love can, Uncle right. Blot. I just wish that, you know, more people, more had people access knew to they it. knew to it's, We have access. You just have to know to ask for it. Uncle Blot. Okay. You have to know to ask for it. Uh, let's talk about once you know uh, you may have cancer, um, one, some of the things that you, you have to do to prevent it from coming back, to build your immune system. Um, so let's talk about some of the things you even mentioned in your book, and I've known because I've learned right. also about this. Um, first of all, stress can bring up cancer, Yes. correct? Yes. So how do you suggest people manage stress? Oh, goodness. Well, that is a very broad you question. Know, well, let me just say this. Studies have shown that 90% of, th of the things that we worry about never happen. Right. So you have to understand that. And when I, I had a girlfriend yesterday that was having a crisis, I said, okay, it's 12.15. You have to 1 o'clock to feel sorry for yourself. And then, get over and then you get over it. And right. you stand up and you fight. So, you know, in this world, we have a very much here and everybody wants everything, immediate gratification, why me, you know. Yeah, right. you, you know, we've got to get over that and, and enjoy every moment. And when stressful things happen, you, you've just got to get through it and, and, and go past on. it. Right. What is the unavoidable thing you talk about that is the root cause of cancer? I hate it. In today's world, I believe that there are many root causes because we we have so many pseudoestrogens in our yes. in our world, the plastics and the hairsprays and the chemicals that mess with our hormones. Uh, they're endocrine disruptors. A lot of the most uh, prevalent cancers are hormone sensitive, prostate and breast yes. and uterine. They're, yes. they're hormone oh. sensitive cancers. And we eat a lot of stuff with hormones. Yes, so. and, and and you know we're we're giving the bovine growth hormone to the you know the cows yes. and the kids are eating it. Um, so you know hormones are huge. You know we talk about sugar feeding cancer, but it's not so much 
natural made sugars, like eating an apple, right, that I don't right. have a problem that's with fructose, someone yeah. eating an apple. But what's what we have a problem with is all of the processed sugars. Absolutely. All of the processed sugars, and they're in everything. And our corn nowadays is genetically modified, what, yes. 90, 95% of the crop. And I tell people, picture a beautiful green field of, of beautiful corn, um, and then picture the crop dusters zipping over and dousing the the Roundup with the glyphosate um, is the major chemical in that all over the corn crop. And then little bugs come along and they crawl up the corn stalk and they take a bite and they roll over there. They die. Their stomach explodes. Right. Well, then, you know, they take that corn. It's beautiful. Um, we eat it. We have so many people with digestive issues and celiac right. Right. and Crohn's and colitis and it's rampant. And I just can't believe there's not some connection to all these chemicals and the way we've changed our food. I, I think when God made corn, I believe when he created everything in Genesis, it says, he said it was good. He right. didn't say, I messed up, I need y'all to, uh, to genetically mod modify, to modify it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll put hormones in it. Yes. Um, or clean it up or use pesticides. Right. Yeah, it's right. it's, it's every aspect of your life. So one of the things that you talk about is low sugar because cancer mm -hmm. grows in sugar. We well, know that. It, 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 sugar speeds up the metabolism of cancer it's, because we know that cancer cells have about 15 times the insulin receptors. They love sugar. And, and I, I think that actually the cancer cell is actually a, it's a survival mechanism of the cell. So it mutates. A healthy cell becomes a cancer cell and it mutates because it can't, it can't live in the toxic environment that our bodies have. You know, it's yeah. the foods that we eat. We think it's food. It says on the package, fortified. You turn it around, and there's really nothing in there. Right. It's a lot of carbohydrates. <laughs> I weighed 35 pounds more when I was diagnosed. Right. I had right. no yeah. idea what I was doing. I was eating oatmeal for breakfast, and I was having bagels, and <laughs> and I mean, I was eating carbs for breakfast, and you really need some protein. Need protein. So tell me what is a regular day like for you as far as what you eat, your exercise level, all that good stuff. Okay. I always, I must, almost always have eggs for breakfast. And, and I was a cereal girl. And I would have still cut oats. And I would stand on the cereal aisle at the grocery store. And I would read the boxes up and down. You know, the sugary stuff is on low for the kids. But I would try and find a sugar, a cereal that that was healthy but had a little sugar. Because I like right, the sweetness. You like sugar. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah. it, sure. you know. So... You know, but all that sugar, all those carbs break down to sugar. And even right, the oatmeal is breaking down cancer. to sugar. So now I've changed. I almost always have an egg for breakfast. And okay. sometimes I'll get a gluten-free tortilla and, um, and I'll roll up and my organic, eggs. And organic. And it's always organic. Yes. It's so important. The organic takes out, uh, for fruits and vegetables, it takes a lot off some of the pesticides. Um, there's environmental working group. You can go to their website and they have a, the clean 15 dirty dozen, mm -hmm. you know, which vegetables and fruits are that the best can, that, that, you that you need to not worry about buying organic. But you know, breakfast is, is great. You have to have a good breakfast. And at some point I usually run by a little place by my house and I pick up a green juice. Okay. And I love my green juice because I sweeten it with a, um, just a one green Granny Smith apple. Or half an apple mm -hmm. because a green apple has less sugar than a red apple what about what about exercise how important is exercise for cancer prevention you know what if you are if you're if you're really sick exercise can stress a very sick body so you have to make sure you have the foundation to even do the exercise mm. and you always want to start out slow if you're sick but what I love to do is I have a three mile track around my neighborhood and I will walk you know, walk for three minutes, and then I run for a minute and a half, and then I walk for three minutes, and then okay, I run so for a minute and a half. Interval training yes. is very good. Yes. Well, let me ask you this. Um, you, you talk about detox, and they're all, I've done all kinds of detox, mm -hmm. um, um, but what works on a daily basis? Because, you know, you could do the... You could do the tea and, and detox for two weeks mm -hmm. and then... Right. But you really need to detox all your life. Yes. So, you like, do. for example, I start with water and lemon every morning. Right. What do you do? That's a detox? perfect thing in the morning. It's okay. really hot. But your water has to be clean. It can't be it out of the to tap. Be clean water. You know, you've got to... Even gotta tap water is not healthy. It's toxic. You need to have a... And if you have a reverse osmosis system, you have to realize you re removed all the minerals. So you need to be supplementing with minerals. Um, but I love a cup of warm... Um, water with some tea in the morning. I actually have a little sauna that I invested in upstairs, and I to sweat. Yes, and I get Sweating in there. Sweating is important. It's so important, and having a bowel movement every day. Okay, that's because important. Because your the body is meant. We have four ways that we detox through the skin, through the breath, um, through the stool, 
And um, oh, I forgot the other one. We didn't have to edit that. <laughs> The stool and, uh, oh, and the okay. urine. I'm sorry. There's four ways the body detoxes through our urine, our stool, our breath, and our skin. And we live in a society where everything is air conditioned. Um, and we have got to get these toxins out. And I could get in my sauna and I put the timer on for 30 minutes. It's just a little tent and my head sticks out. And I put on a TV show and I because that will get me through the 30 minutes. And I will be dripping. Or if you can't do that, get in a hot tub with up to your neck with water and, and you know, open salt. up the pores so you can, salt you can add Epsom salts. But sweating is so important. It's important to, to detox. Yes, because if you're toxic, cancer is a disease of toxicity and deficiency. The cells are toxic and they're deficient. And the cells don't want to die so they mutate and they, they become a cell that just can survive on fermenting sugar, they have no function, because the body doesn't want to die. These cells, I just think it's a self, it's a, a self mechanism where they want a survival mechanism. All right, Jenny Hrvacek, there's a lot of great information that you have in this book, and, and you've shared a lot of important information. Mm -hmm. So um, if you want more information, your website is www.cancerfreearyousure.com. And do not wait for the lump or bump. Get That's tested right. early. Don't wait for the lump or bump.